And this is five. Five ducks. Whoa, what are you doing? Flashcards, I'm teaching them numbers. Yeah, then after that, I'm gonna teach them to deal poker from the bottom of the deck. <laughs> Abby, look what you're doing here. You're locking them into the concept that this is two and this is three. You're putting his little mind in a straitjacket. Larry, counting is a natural human activity. I'm counting to ten right now. Next thing you'll be singing them the ABCs like letters have to come in some official order, like G is better than H because it comes first. Oh, wait. Yeah, G. And you guys, look, look at this. This, this nut is taking a bath in the fountain in front of City Hall. Look, he's got a shower cap and a loofah and oh, a... Oh, wow, a... Terry's back in town. You know this guy? Yeah, he's a performance artist. We used to do pieces together all the time. Well, this isn't art, this is hygiene. Oh, no, this is his art. Like last year in Berlin, he lined up 500 pairs of shoes in front of the Brandenburg Gate and tried them all on. The piece was called, Do These Come in a Nine? I'm sorry, I called him a nut. Wow, thank you. Thank you for bailing me out. You know, being in jail is just... It's just changed how I look at everything. He was in jail for three hours. Yeah, yeah, and it was hell. Jail is like, like some kind of cage. Oh, remember in Minneapolis when you built that giant cage and you ran on the big hamster wheel? Yeah, yeah. You should do that again. No, 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 Darman. I'm trying to focus on my new series right now. Right now I'm trying to focus on private acts in public places. You were always the last kid picked for dodgeball, weren't you? It's okay, Dharma. He just doesn't get it. Look, look at those mirrors. See, I'm gonna shave, nick myself, and then put a little piece of toilet paper on it. Why? <laughs> no, honey, you don't ask why. No, 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 in this piece, I want people to ask why. Well, look at that. Good for you, honey. Mm. Oh, look, shrunken applehead dolls. Mm. It's like I want them to ask, why is this man shaving in public? Does he have no home? Does he know where he is? Does his beard grow at some superhuman speed? Wow. You know, Terry, your work has really evolved. I know. It's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. Darma, listen. Next week, I'm going to do this piece where I live in an art gallery for seven days, on display, 24 hours a day. Why? Very good. <laughs> do it with me. What, live at the art gallery with you? Yeah, yeah. Two people living in a cramped space, irritated, fighting, picking at each other, getting on each other's nerves. Oh, wow. That sounds like so much fun. Doesn't it? I mean, look at this. Wouldn't this look great in my parents' lake house? It's grotesque. I love it. I'll be right back. <laughs> ah! Yeah. Are you sure you're okay with this? Sure. You know, it looks great. You've got your bunk beds and your table and your big window to the street and the people out there gawking at you. It really opens the space up. Wow, we have gawkers already. Ah, oh, it's exciting. Can you feel it? Hey, you ready? Yeah, totally. Just unpacking and getting settled, and Greg's trying to talk me out of it in a really sweet, kind of lame, passive-aggressive way. Oh, well, did anyone hear it? Oh, I don't think so. Oh, do you think you can get him to do it again? Oh, I don't think he's anywhere near through. <laughs> I'm sorry, can you just help me try to understand why you're doing this? You mean besides the chance to participate in something amazing? Yeah, besides that. <laughs> Honey, after the car accident, I started thinking about my life and how much I've changed, and now I stop doing the stuff that's me. And this is you? Well, it used to be. I mean, how long has it been since I've gone trick-or-treating in April or, or, or tried to get a job as a translator at the International House of Pancakes? I guess too long. I know, and I miss it. Okay, well, then you should live in an art gallery, unless the uh, pancake gig comes through. I can say boysenberry in 26 languages. Try me. No, I, I, I believe you. Listen, I, I gotta, gotta get to work. So. Yeah, I love you. Come on, what, what kind of kiss is that? Oh, come on. Come on. I'm, okay, I'm sorry. I, oh, I, I just on. can't. Oh, I'm, oh, just, oh. Have a good art piece. So he's really okay with this, huh? Well, he's trying. But watch, he's gonna think of something else to say to me about it. Turn around and then change his mind. Watch. Wow, that was really good. I know, I can do it all day long. There's no money in it. 
Hi guys, sorry I'm late. Let me just uh, change my clothes and we'll go for a walk. Already had one. <laughs> they got away from me a couple of times. These are them, right? <laughs> hey, what are you doing here? Oh, don't ask. You want a beer? I guess. <laughs> well, where's Abby? Well, I don't know where she is now, but she was on my back all day. <laughs> Oh, sorry. Looks like I got the last one. Split it? Uh, no, thanks. Uh, did you and Abby have a fight? She threw me out. I gave the baby two bites of my beef burrito. Suddenly, I'm Satan. <laughs> Meanwhile, she's indoctrinating the kid in the world of numbers, the linchpin of consumer-driven material excess. So she's upset that you gave him meat. You're not hearing my side of this at all, are you? <laughs> Larry. <laughs> you do know Dharma's staying at the art gallery. I know. That's why I figured it'd be cool to crash here until Hurricane Abby blows out to sea. <laughs> anyway, I don't want to impose. I'll just sleep on Dharma's side of the bed. You won't even know I'm here. Larry, you're sleeping on the couch. I wish. <laughs> but this is really happening. How's it going? Great. We had this huge crowd for lunch, and I clipped my toenails. Always a lunchtime favorite. Um, we, we, have, we have a little problem. Um, your parents had a fight, and your dad spent the night at our place, and uh, he doesn't wear pajamas, and he sat everywhere. Honey, you know what? He probably came over because he needs a shoulder to cry on. Did you try comforting him? Yeah, well, he did... Uh, Spoon me for a moment until I woke up and tried to peel my own skin off. Does that count? He slept in the bed with you? Well, he, uh, he claims that he uh, got up from the couch to go to the bathroom and got disoriented on his way back. Dormy, can you give me a hand with this? Sure. Amazing piece, isn't it? Maybe you could take a little break and go and, and deal with Larry. Oh, honey, I can't just leave. It'll violate the integrity of the piece. <laughs> well, what am I supposed to do? Honey, you know what? Abby and Larry get in these fights all the time, and it always blows over. And in the meantime, just lay down some towels. Funny. But they're brand new towels. They're Egyptian cotton. He's new. He wasn't here yesterday. I'm not part of this. I'm not comfortable when they talk to you. I think he represents the repressed dark side of the human psyche. Yes, I do. Whoa. <laughs> Larry? In here, Greg. <laughs> Whoa. My fault. I should have knocked when you said, in here, Greg. <laughs> you should have seen your face. Oh. You were so surprised. Yeah, well, I guess I just didn't expect to see my in-laws having sex on my butcher block. Well, Larry told me how picky you are about the bed, Greg, and we wanted to respect that. Thank you, Abby. I just, um, just glad that you made up. Oh, no. We haven't made up. She's still just as mad at me. <laughs> Maybe more. But uh, Larry and I keep our physical and emotional relationships separate. We're not about to punish our bodies for a fight our minds are having. We're animals, Greg, and we need sexual release. I mean, I can do it by myself. I get it, I get it. You're still having a fight. Okay, well, I know you probably want to make yourself some dinner, so we'll go finish in the bedroom. I thought we were finished. Was I speaking to you? Amazing piece, isn't it? You see that angry guy? That's a husband. This is gonna be great. 
Why can't anybody in your family keep their clothes on? It's not that hard. I'm sorry, what? I saw your parents having sex. Oh, did they make up? Or were they just servicing their bodies? Either way, the point is I now have no place to chop vegetables. Dharma, please come home. This is absurd. Excuse me, can you make it clear that you're talking about a marital issue? Because when you say this is absurd, it sounds like you're talking about the piece. And I think the guy in the tweed is the art critic from the Chronicle. I'm sorry if I was unclear. This piece is absurd. Yes, it is. Because life is absurd and art reflects life. Greg, you said you were going to be supportive of me doing the things that I love. I am, but Larry is driving me crazy. Yeah, but honey, you know I want to do this and I don't want to stop just because you're uncomfortable looking at my father's tushy. First of all, I am not looking at it. And secondly, please come home and deal with this. It's very important. Well, since when do you get to be the one who decides what's important? I don't know, since you decided to run off and live in an art gallery? Look, you knew I was when you married me. Okay, you didn't, but now you do. Okay, all right, so that's the way it's gonna be. You get to do whatever you want. I have no say, and Abby and Larry have sex on our butcher block. Well, at least my parents have sex. I leave my parents out all of this. All I'm saying is maybe you wouldn't be so uptight if, if Kitty and Edward Montgomery had used the butcher block from time to time. Okay, all right, all right, all right. If that's what you have to do is stay here, then I maybe I have to go and figure out what I have to do. What's that supposed to mean? It's art. It's open to interpretation. <laughs> Come on, Greg, you can talk to me. I'm not just your father-in-law, I'm your friend. Listen, I just think that we Hang should... on. <laughs> that should do it. All I want to say is, I know you're upset with Dharma, but I got to tell you, you've really been short-tempered lately. Is there anything going on at work or at home? <laughs> well, you're living here. Exactly. That's got to be stressful. That's the kind of thing that would make you snap at Dharma. So you agree that your living here might exacerbate the problems I'm having with Dharma? Mm, sure. You'd have to be some kind of a superman not to have that affect you. So you're saying that if you moved out, it might make it easier for me to handle this? It stands to reason. And don't be too big a man to say to Dharma, hey, I blew a fuse. I got this guy living with me. He's driving me crazy. He set fire to my sofa. He broke my garbage disposal. You what? You know, you're right. Don't bark it down in specifics. Just say, honey, maybe I overreacted because I'm under stress, but I love you. Larry, flare up. Hang on. I'm going to bed. Right behind you. You asleep? No, I'm just watching him tow that guy's car over there. <laughs> nice. Listen, when that review comes out tomorrow, if it's a good one, and how could it not be? <laughs> this piece could be extended maybe for a month. Terry, I don't know if I can do a month. Because of him? <laughs> Prefer it when you call Greg that guy, because he calls you him and it gets confusing. <laughs> What do you want to do? Well, obviously this. I mean, today when I woke up, I had a string of spit hanging from my mouth, and that's when that school group is here, and those kids are now going to grow up to appreciate art. That's beautiful. Terry, don't you think in a relationship you have to make compromises? Absolutely. So you should tell that guy he's being unreasonable. I was talking about me. Terry, I think I have to go home. No, 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 Dharma. Dharma, you can't leave. It's going to ruin everything. All right, look, here's the thing, Terry. I don't know if my marriage is at risk here, but I don't really want to find out. But if you compromise the essence of who you are, Dharma, who is it that Greg gets? Not the Dharma he fell in love with. Yeah, but if I do stay true to myself and I am the woman he fell in love with, then how do we stay together? Okay, okay, we totally have to stop talking now and start again later when the gallery opens because this is brilliant. <laughs> Terry, this is my life we're talking about. This is my marriage. This is everything. <laughs> hey, hey, look at this. Dharma's little art thing is reviewed in the paper. Really? Two people living in an art gallery is nothing more and nothing less. Well, that should have them popping the champagne. Actually, the fellow seems to like it. Oh. oh, look at this. They mention us. They do? <laughs> then the argument got more heated. The woman suggested her husband wouldn't be so uptight if, quote, Edward and Kitty Montgomery had... <laughs> Edward and Kitty Montgomery had what? 
Oh, that was it. <laughs> oh, you're an Aquarius, aren't you? Uh, travel's in your future. You see the paper. All right, all right, all right. You've changed your hair. It's lovely. <laughs> well, I have never been so humiliated in my entire life. No, no, no. What about the time at the governor's mansion when you tucked the back of your dress into your pantyhose? <laughs> Or the O'Shaughnessy cocktail party when you sneezed and white Russian came out of your nose? <laughs> or the time... Edward, you have made your point. And I had a good time doing it. I'm home. Please cover your bathing suit areas. Hey, look who I ran into at the discount meat warehouse. I thought you said you were going to go take a deposition. That's just what you say. Like, you know, I'm going to go see a man about a horse. <laughs> Anyway, we pooled our money and we got the butcher's bonanza. You get six different cuts of steak, three different roasts, and assorted pork products. Larry, did you talk to Abby today? No. Why? What's going on? I'm gonna go hang this up. Careful when you open the closet. The paint's still wet. Thank you, Larry. <laughs> looky, looky, looky. Back bacon. <laughs> Oh, hi, Dad. What's up? Your mother wants you out of the will. <laughs> oh, no. They printed the butcher block thing. Let the record show I gave you hell about it. Son, if you, if you don't mind, I'm going to cool my heels here for a while till your mother's tranquilizers kick in. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Is that steaks I smell? It's either that or the sofa. Hey, Ed, what can we get you? Have you got a New York strip in there? Ooh, excellent choice. Look at the marbling on that. This came from one lazy cow. You know, Kitty's been talking to my doctor. The closest thing I get to a steak these days is some kind of Salisbury turkey patty. I'd kill for that. The closest thing I get to steak is lima beans. Dad, I'm sure that Mother's just concerned about your health. Well, you know, they say it's about your health, but it's all about control. That's why I left Jane. Jane threw you out and changed the locks. To control me. <laughs> They tell you what to eat, what to do, what to wear. You'd think a grown man would be able to dress himself. Tell me about it. You line up the buttons wrong just one time, and they make you stand there while they do it for you. Is it possible they're just trying to keep you from looking ridiculous? The point is, son, is that if you're doing something, they don't understand it, they don't like it, they squash it like a bug. Yeah, like how Abby wouldn't let me raise ostriches. Larry, <laughs> it's a pretty risky investment. They're, they're large, they're hard to care for. Wow. Put on a peasant dress and some patchouli, and you're Abby. <laughs> yeah, what? You're gonna make us turn off the game so we can look at some fabric swatches? <laughs> you know what? I gotta go. Son, the boys are just teasing you about your womanly attitude. It's... <laughs> I know, Dad. There's just something I gotta do. Are you gonna raise those ostriches for meat? No. I was gonna train monkeys to ride them. I saw it in a cartoon. <laughs> nice. Hello, Greg. Um, Terry, can you give us a minute? Can I give you a minute? What, Greg, do I own time? First time I ask with words. Bathroom break. <laughs> Listen, I've had a chance to think about this, and I don't understand what you're doing, and I wish you weren't doing it, and it is an inconvenience for me, but the bigger thing is I miss you very much. And more than anything, I don't want to turn into our mothers. Wow, that started off really sweet, and then it got kind of weird at the end. Yeah. The thing is, I shouldn't stop you from doing things just because I don't understand them. I should accept that they're important to you, whatever they are, whether it's living in a gallery or, or, or raising ostriches or, or raising ostriches in an art gallery. The point is, you have to do this and I have to deal with it. And then there'll be the next thing you'll have to do, and I'll deal with that, too. Yeah, and then you'll do things that I don't understand, and I'll have to deal with them. No, I won't. <laughs> no, you won't. <laughs> oh, yeah? Check this out. <laughs> well, I guess I can deal with Larry, uh, till Saturday. Yeah, um, actually, honey, the piece is extended for a month. <laughs> okay, I'll be back tonight with a pair of pajamas, some clean clothes, and, uh, drapes. Hey, honey, honey, bring your electric nose hair clippers. They'll love that. <laughs>
morning. Good morning. <laughs> I'll make coffee. Okay. Morning. Morning. Do you mind if I uh, get in the shower first? I have to be at the office by nine. Sure. I don't get it. <laughs> it's art, Edward Montgomery. Now come along home. We're going to have sex as we do on a regular basis. 